Here you see what I do with some time to spare. <laughs> editing articles. Um, all right, I'll give you I'll give you the country report for Namibia. Um, I will basically stick to the to the structure that was kind of requested in the email. <laughs> My slides are more than 15 minutes. I'll try to talk a bit faster. Um, okay, so those five things are going to cover. Uh, we start with um, the plans for a chapter in Namibia. The, well, you will see an overview of the plans on this particular slide. Um, yes, that is intended. Um, that is not a technical uh, problem. Uh, so we do not have a, a plan to form a chapter anytime soon. Uh, Okay, there are obviously reasons for that, and one of the reasons is that there are, well, Asaf would say there's a different number, but I would define two active editors uh, that geolocate to Namibia. One of them is standing in front of you, the other one is editing the German Wikipedia and has actually retired since uh, last month. Um, I feel that I don't need a chapter for myself. That's, that's one thing. We, we do have people making constructive edits. So we do have um, IPs that go to ministries, that go to large companies, that make really nice edits, not co uh, conflict of interest, not agitation or, or uh, religious arguments or whatever. But it's IPs, they don't produce uh, a user account, they don't log in, so I, uh, often I know who it is because you know, Namibia is really small in terms of population. I haven't introduced the country report here for, for, for those who run in Namibia, but it's like, it's the size two and a half times of Germany, and it's two million inhabitants, second, second uh, least populated country in the world by, by uh, people per square kilometer. So schools, government institutions, there are edits that are all good faith edits. Very often after that edit, I will have another edit and I will say, in my edit, some wiki file recent editions. Let's put it like this. So, but the chapter is not viable at the moment. Um, outreach challenges. Okay, you, you know that the structure was we should say challenges and then we should say successes. So yes, I made five sections in my presentation, but obviously the challenge section is a bit longer than the successes. Um, the first thing that I approach anyone with, with the idea of editing Wikipedia, they say, what's it for me? Uh, what will I get from that? And there are, I, I believe there are a few interesting answers, a, f a few good answers to that question, but of course people that approach me in that way think of money, right? <coughs> and then I'll have to tell them, sorry, that is not for gain. Um, but we do have predispositions uh, from people. We have students, I've introduced uh, more than 1,500 students to editing Wikipedia. Uh, there's still one sticking around. Okay, it was four years ago, but one is still active, actively editing, and I just learned that there's another one that might fall into the roster of five edits a month for, for three months. Um, then we have villagers. Well, they have money. Uh, that's the story. They, they are poor. I can understand it. It's not like, I don't want to put them down. It doesn't mean they are against free knowledge, but they have other problems. Uh, very simply. Their problem is, what do my kids eat tonight? Not, how do I share my vast knowledge? That's, that's not what they want. And, okay, the student want the mark, the, the villagers want money, the teachers want nothing. They want their separate check, I must say that. Um, okay. The standard answer, okay, if you can't get money, you, you can relate things to their personal pride. Um, so, for instance, I, I tend to tell them that, that they are just talking to the widest read author on Namibian history on the planet. That's me. Yeah, because I have the right medium. I have Wikipedia, Wikipedia right? Uh, and I'm not a historian at all, and I'm probably relatively clueless. But uh, my pages together have an estimated 30,000 hits per day. Uh, no scientist is, uh, is ever going to achieve that. 
very simple. Not if they are not using Wikipedia. So now, but that is also uh, that's also kind of hmm, that's an argument that that doesn't really doesn't really go with the villages community. They, 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 they have no relationship to, to this kind of, of pride. Uh, we can sometimes get them with acknowledgement, with publicity. We tell them, look, if you achieve this and that, then Peter will make a nice press statement for you, then you read yourself and you see your, your photo in the, in the newspaper. That's a double-edged sword. I'll come back to that. Um, and then we can get them via their cultural pride, their tribe, uh, and we say, look here, uh, that would be a long story now, I'm not going to tell about that, but I say, look, your knowledge preservation in the village is in danger. And if you want to keep your knowledge, even, or your culture, even as a historic record in writing, then you would start to act now. Otherwise, you're going to lose that kind of knowledge. And that is the argument that pulls some people, at least in theory. All right, there are other possible answers. For instance, there are perks. I mean, I, I, I'm quite open about that. You know, I like traveling the world. I, I don't like oh, Tamboy Airport so much, but I mean, it is kind of a, it's kind of a change in my daily routine. And, and, and I can travel to London, and I can bring gifts to my kids, and I don't have to buy t-shirts because I've got so many Wiki, Wikimedia, Wikipedia, Wiki Foundation t-shirts that uh, <laughs> that I actually need a second couple, but uh, that's perks. I mean, and they are happy about the t-shirt. Uh, they, have, they haven't had a new t-shirt in the village for a couple of years, actually, and you can see that. And they're wearing them. So if I come to Apokira, I see over, when I walk once through the village, I'll see five people wearing a Wikipedia t-shirt, yes. Um, the same thing that I gave them one and a half years ago. Um, unfortunately, if I tell students that it improves their learning, or if I tell teachers that it improves their teaching, I'm wasting my time. Uh, maybe we have, I hope we have a few minutes of discussion after that. I, I have no idea. Uh, I want to do things well that I do. Uh, and I am a teacher by profession, and anything that improves my teaching will considerably improve my teaching, I will use. Uh, apparently, that is something. All right, we have challenges. That was the challenges in motivation. Now we have the challenges in organization. So I can, I'll not read that out to you. I'll, I'll, I'll leave that, I'll leave that uh, for you to simply read uh, or just fly over. The gist of the story is whenever we do outreach, there's not a school day. So that was a 100% hit. I do three days of outreach and I can bet my entire monthly salary that the school will not be open over all three days. I was just in the village this week and on Monday, guess what? Day of the African child. No, that's not a public holiday in Namibia. Well, it's a reason to close the school. Yeah, fantastic. Uh, so whenever we do outreach, I, I use I, I lose between fifty and one oh, no, that's not exaggerated. I, I lose between twenty and one hundred percent of the school days simply because there's nobody there, and they didn't tell me in advance, of course. So that's fine. Right. So you say I could phone the principal, maybe. Uh, there's another problem. Uh, if I want to phone the principal, he needs to have a cell phone. That's that's not uh, one hundred percent. Sure, he needs to have cell phone coverage. I, I didn't even include that. You see, in the village, cell phone folks in Namibia are often, you need to initiate it from the village because you need to climb a tree, literally, I'm not joking. You need to climb a tree or walk around the corner or to the petrol station or to a house where it's known. You have half of a bar, you know, in your, in your network uh, display. Right? So I can't just reach the principal in his office. There's no landline and the cell phone doesn't have network coverage. Uh, on top of that, he, uh, if, he's, if he thinks he's busy, he won't pick up and, 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 and he, you know, he needs to be really bored to talk to me. Um, that's a problem. And then, of course, there's a problem that, yeah, uh, how much can I do? I've got a full-time job. I, I managed to overlap somehow what I'm doing uh, in teaching and research with what I'm, what I'm doing on Wikipedia. But uh, I can't cut myself into pieces and, and do three outreach at the same time. All right, and we have, of course, access challenges. I was specifically asked to mention that. 
Um, in Namibia, it looks like this. There, there's no landline in villages. There's landlines on farms, and there's landlines in the German towns, as I said, in the towns that existed during the time of German colonization between 1884 and 1915. Uh, every town that has been established later doesn't have to be an uh, The phone coverage I already mentioned, uh, electrification is another problem. Still, we have several hundred schools with computer labs. That might be surprising, right? So, nice computers, beautiful, uh, empty room, you know, computer, 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 they are all fantastic. Uh, if we are lucky, they are used for typing classes. Because what happened is that a, that a truck from the ministry came around in 2008 or 2009, dropped 25 computers at every school, cabled it all together, put, it, put the plugs into the socket, uh, and left. And did not consider to even show any teacher of what to do with that. They make the principal sign, we have delivered computers, voila. And then the principal sees that and says, oh, I'm responsible. And, and, and what happens is they lock the door. So, okay, that's our computer lab, the ministry gave it to us, nobody's going to touch it because uh, if anything breaks, then it's going to be me. So nobody entered that room. So, in effect, the school loses a classroom at the time it gets a computer. Um, when, I, when I came to the computer on Monday, I found my, I found my notices on the blackboard uh, from my last visit. So the entire blackboard kind of covered with, covered with my hands. I was last there on the 10th of December 2013. And on Monday it was still there. So this lab hasn't been entered even uh, since December 2011. Alright, we have... We have other challenges that might be specific to Namibia, and that is the mass communication channels that we're using. Uh, in rural Namibia, there's no newspaper. There's, of course, no book, right? But there's no newspaper, and there's pretty much no television, because it is an effort. You need some sort of electricity. Even if you handle it with a car battery, uh, you need a place where to charge that car battery. You can't put up solar because the panels are being stolen. So, if anything needs to be communicated in the village, then it happens via the, the Oche Herero or Oche Ndonga radio. So, the radio uh, programs in indigenous languages. Or it happens via a megaphone. Really, somebody's walking through the village and bah, 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 bah. And, uh, you know, people open their windows and say, ah, is that for me? No, okay. So that's how they communicate. Oh, via notice boards. Now, that has three principal problems for, for Wikipedia outreach. The first one is there's no obvious interface to Wikipedia, right? Uh, so there is a nice interface of saying, I have an online newspaper, I can use it directly, for instance, as a source, right? Or I can directly, pretty much directly channel from Wikipedia to the newspaper and vice versa. Uh, it's also, of course, not useful as a reliable source. Imagine I put, uh, I put in that, that the village of Apukiro became 111 years old and I referenced it to a megaphone speech uh, on Monday morning. I mean, I, I can already see the revert, the edits always, in the revert uh, uh, edits, right? The, the, that would be strange. And, and it is completely cumbersome, real challenging, to access it from the outside. If I want to announce from Windhoek that I'm coming to the village and that I'm giving a free training, uh, well, how do I reach the megaphone, right? The, the handler of the red megaphone again has a cell phone that I can't call because it hasn't got reception. Uh, the notice board would be possible, but that means, you know, I have a month in advance, I have to type that stuff, I have to pack it, I have to send it via snail mail, I have to make sure it arrives at a person that will be responsible enough to unpack it, to stick it to the several notice boards. I, I must admit we are sometimes not that organized. Uh, that's, that's a schlep as well. And then OJRL okay, radio, that, yes, that's possible, there is a station in Windhoek, but I don't speak it. I need help from other people, right? So I need to, to make up what I want to say. Somebody else is going to translate it in OJRL. Okay, Somebody needs to also convince the radio station that this is significant enough to be broadcast. And, and, and all three together usually don't happen. All right, uh, it's not empty, yeah? It's not empty, that particular chapter, but it's not as long as my challenges. 
Um, we do have, for a start, we have buy-in. We have buy-in from government. They say, go ahead, whatever you do. We have, uh, we have support from, the, from telecom. We have support from academic institutions. By the way, those slides are available in comments uh, under the category wiki in DAVA 2014, so you don't need to type. Um, so, the, and what I told the foundation last year in, 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 in Hong Kong, I said, money is no problem for us. Whatever I want to do, I, I get funds for that. I don't need the foundation. Um, there's, there's really lots of money for whatever we want to do, whichever flimsy reason we bring why we need that money, we'll get it immediately. Um, and, and that, of course, helps a bit. Because it also costs money to travel, you know, distances in Namibia or almost like distances in South Africa. And, yes, we have introduced 2,000 people. I have introduced about 2,000 people to Wikipedia editing. Uh, unfortunately, most of them students that had this assignment mark in their mind and that never came back. Um, but it's still, I think it's a number that's, that's, that's higher than in other countries. Another, what I think is a success story, is that our coverage on the English Wikipedia is not worse than than in surrounding countries. I know there's a couple of other statistics coming. Uh, I assembled this one by going through the respective wiki projects, uh, checking how many of the editors, or which of the editors uh, have uh, at least a three-digit edit count, not starting with one. Uh, so I only considered editors that, that explicitly made a statement that they are going to develop uh, articles in that particular arena, um, and then I counted, of course, the geo, the wiki project, the project tagged articles, and we come to somewhat seven uh, editors for Namibia that take care of fifteen hundred articles, not counting categories and, and templates and stuff. And apart from South Africa, which is obviously much larger, if I look at Botswana, Zambia, Angola, you see that's approximately the same stuff. Uh, so, but it, it seems, it, it's the same story like Asaf uh, alluded to. Uh, the eight editors from Botswana, as well as most of the six editors from Namibia, or, or for Namibia, are not editing from Namibia. Right? The most prolific, uh, the most prolific editor on Namibian topics in terms of edit is Dr. Blofeld. You all know him; he's not Namibian. Right? The second most lives in Australia. I think I come on number three. Um, so somebody else writes about Namibia, and somebody else writes about Botswana, right? and that is that is an issue uh, because that is some sort of. Or that, that kind of has the seed of being some sort of neo-colonialism, if you want. Uh, okay, uh, I do have some, some news from Wednesday, even though I, I just after I finished the presentation, I learned that user group is actually a protected term of sorts. So it's not a user group in the, in the way that the Tunisian user group has been acknowledged by the Wikimedia Foundation, but there is a group of six or seven Ocehavero native speakers that have agreed to meet as from next week. And, uh, let's hope something is going to come out of that. The Ocehavero Wikipedia was closed a couple of years ago due to inactivity, is now an incubator, has 46 articles or something. So let's hope we're going to get that going now. Yeah, it was only one slide of successes. Um, future plans, well, <laughs> I don't know if that's really plans, but uh, let me make some advertisement. Uh, we have an experiment on oral citations, uh, but I have a separate, separate talk about that tomorrow at 12. Uh, if you are interested, please come. Uh, we also, uh, I also introduce research activities, so not so much outreach, but how our, how our scientific team supports uh, and steers and directs what we are doing with the community in the villages. Uh, that might be interesting. I hope it's interesting for you. That will be a talk on Sunday morning. Um, we do have a rather official government request to scale it to other regions of Namibia. I need editors first. 
as much as I love traveling to Kaoko felt that a thousand kilometers further apart than Omaheke. And then I don't need three days off, I need six days off to make that happen. And, and that's just difficult with my schedule. Uh, we did have a university project, at one point actually the largest in the world. Uh, we had to close it down due to uh, uh, plagiarism, copyright concerns. Um, so it's no longer a mandatory assignment. It was cut in, in, in 2012. It was not happening in 2013. As of this year, it has been replaced by a voluntary exercise. Um, so I'll have to see what, what happens if it's voluntary, how many people take it up, and how many plagiarism and copyright cases we're going to have. And as I mentioned, we have languages in, in incubator. Uh, those are just the two with a, or yeah, two of the indigenous Namibian languages that are uh, that have the largest number of speakers. There's a third one, Koikoiko Map, is also an incubator with one page. Uh, and then we have a couple of other languages that are official languages of Namibia that haven't even made it to uh, to an incubator page. So there's still a lot to do. We are currently busy with, with Ochihalevo, language code, HZ. Uh, once we get that going, we will move on. Okay, thank you very much. I hope I didn't take too much time. And as it's written, anyone who is working <laughs> As you can see, anyone who has questions, recommendations, remarks, Peter, I've got uh, one question. Um, since you've been in, in this business uh, longer than most people I know, what does the what does the ideal Wikipedia look like to you? Like, like th there's few people who you found as, as miraculous, strange, wonderful, worth more than gold people that you find and carry on into Wikipedia. Or whatever. Like, is there any commonalities to to, to what they're like? How, like how you might find them? And, What's the holy grail? Um, well, uh, I think I have an idea. It's at one at one place. It's or at once it's um, the editor who is able to combine work and Wikipedia in some way. So somebody who can, without without being afraid for his for his job, uh, edit Wikipedia in his office. So that is typically people that will stick around for a long time, that can take a lot of time. Um, and I think those are some of the people that will stick around. There is a second category, but now, you know, English is not my native tongue, and I, I need to be very careful about what I say now. Um, let me put it like this. There's people that have no other place in society. Uh, loners. Uh, at times, uh, at a stage where, where we would call them disabled in some way, uh, mentally disabled. And I found that those bring a lot of commitment uh, because they are looking for their place. Eccentrics. Eccentrics, but it goes beyond that. Um, so I, I, think, I think that, is a cons that, is, that, is, that forms a considerable fraction of the hyperactive Wikipedians, Wikimedians worldwide. Uh, and don't see that as something bad, or I don't want to put down anyone. Uh, we need those people. We need those people that are sitting, I just, I just met somebody yesterday, who is sitting in his, his, his little room and who's going through volumes and volumes and volumes of indigenous birds. And makes one article after another, today, tomorrow, Thursday, and Friday, and Saturday. Um, and is actually too shy to come here, that was how it was. How it's originated, we invited him and said, no, better not. You know, uh, that's nothing bad. We need all sorts of people. In the beginning, we had the IPs that said, all right, I can contribute something. They would post a block of text, sometimes plagiarized, sometimes copyright violation, but sometimes very, very good. Uh, many of the technological articles, if you go back, um, if you look at their very first version, it was one huge block of text, uh, 15,000 bytes. Uh, without any reference, of course, 
But if you look through, it's correct. It's, it's entirely correct. It must come from, you know, when I look through computer science, for instance, it must come from a scientist or from an engineer. Uh, that is absolutely spot on. And those people have been chased away from the English Wikipedia, as in references and formatting and, and edit summaries, but then edit summary. Uh, you know, those people are not there anymore. So we need to see where are the content contributors coming from. I also see bored students and, and senior, senior school uh, goers from, from schools that have internet access pretty much 24-7. I also see them as very valuable for as long as you don't vandalize. You know, those are the people adding categories and going through and looking for a particular spelling error, finding 547 pages and, and kind of eating through that heap. Uh, and we need all of them. So, so that would be my idea, but, but preferably, uh, you know, somebody where Wikipedia can have a proper place in your life without, you know, kind of uh, pushing your children away or, or getting your boss on the nerves or using the company's internet resources for no purpose. Uh, that's maybe the ideal one. Um, there's 